Welcome to another episode of Sports Extra, your premium online sports show. I'm your host, Ruim Bochakorega. I do have my guest in studio, but we're going to be talking a little bit about that uh, later on. So what can you look forward to uh, this week? Well, we were at the Mashwede 10-kilometer, uh, 5-kilometer road race, and it was at the Mashwede village. Believe me, it was pomp and fanfare. It was the inaugural race. And we're looking forward to more races coming up from them. We're going to go through a quick review of that. We're also going to be taking a look at what happened with the women's sables. Well done to them for a huge victory over Namibia after a quite embarrassing one against the South Africa. And we're just going to look at the stark differences in performances in those in those particular matches that they played and then of course continuing with rugby two major finals were played it was an all new zealand final in the uh, inaugural super rugby pacific uh, trophy whilst there was also another inaugural final of the vodacom united rugby championship and it was the crusaders and the stormers respectively picking up those titles and then finally we are going to take a look at another side of things we're also going to look at a little bit of uh, transfer uh, transfer zone news in football sadio mane is finally gone so liverpool uh, fans begin to knock your knees because the engine room of Liverpool is finally gone. Stay locked on as we get into Sports Extra. Well, I did mention before that I do have a guest. Well, he's not a guest anymore. I mean, he's a resident analyst. Thank you. At Sports Thank Extra. You. <laughs> That's a Sydney. Uh, someone in Sydney, always great to have you. And uh, I mean, let's get straight into it. We start off with the Mashwede 10-kilometer, uh, 5-kilometer road race that mm -hmm. was run uh, there at Mashwede Village. It was a lovely atmosphere, yeah. great turnout, particularly uh, with the athletes that came through. But one of the winners, that's Moses Tarakinu, who won the men's section of the 10-kilometer road race. We remember him from somewhere, don't we? Yeah, Vic Falls uh, Sports... Um Gosh, it's been a while. <laughs> it, is, it was a big full sports tourism. Yeah, I remember him. I mean, the gentleman is committed and is someone who can... I mean, running a marathon, ladies and gentlemen, it's not that easy. So having someone, you know, doing, following religiously all the marathon tours that are happening in and out of the country, it shows that the gentleman is really committed to what he does. Trust me, did you get a, uh, mm -hmm. did you get a chance to run? Uh, no, uh, I, I just got a chance to, to watch <laughs> and observe. That was my key responsibility <laughs> in that particular thing. But one thing I must say is that Moses Tarakinu is now one of the top runners in the country. He was mm -hmm. also uh, down in South Africa uh, running the, the, the Two Oceans Marathon. Uh, wow. He came 10th in the 21 kilometer section, wow. uh, which is a very good feat as well because uh, the Two Oceans is no joke. But uh, moving on from there, we've also got Oliver Chitate. She won uh, the women's section uh, side of things. Mm -hmm. She's uh, also said that she was going to be preparing for the Econet Vic Falls Marathon. And she also is going to be looking to participate in the Tanganda uh, Half Marathon as well. That will be run out there in Mutare. Uh, that is this coming weekend. So uh, we wish them the very best of luck. And believe me, if you stay logged on to our social media platforms, we're going to be showing you pictures and highlights uh, from that particular uh, space. We even got to speak to the bike addicts. Uh, now, bike addicts, uh, <laughs> that's a whole different area. They're into BMX racing, youngsters who are doing that, and they're being picked up from all of these um, um, communities, uh, even within the ghetto, and we're getting one of them will be going through to France. So we're going to be featuring that very soon on this particular uh, platform. But we want to quickly move over from Mashwede and go on to the rugby field where our women's sables did us proud um, after quite a number of people had been yeah, shaming yeah. And, and shouting on social media groups without much understanding <laughs> and asking for the coach to be changed without even knowing what was going on. Guys, we are not, I repeat, we are not on the same level as a South Africa. 
whether it's men, women's rugby, it's under 20, it's under 19, it's, it's under sevens. 14, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> we are not on the same level as those guys. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in order to get there. So we won 72 points to nil against Namibia. Mm -hmm. A fantastic performance for us. Great performance for the ladies. It's good to see that. Uh, trust me, I came across this horrible comment on uh, Facebook. Uh, saying that we should stop women's rugby just because we suffered a huge defeat in the hands of South Africa, 108 to 0. Guys, if you are not a rugby person, please don't just throw the comments because what it will do to the ladies is that it will discourage them. But it's good to see that they came back and won comfortably by 72 points to zero. So right now, what we should be expecting is those guys, you know, just saying positive things about the ladies because look, Rugby, guys, is no, it's not soccer. I have to, I just have to tell you. There are so many facets of the game. There are so many rules and laws. And there are so many things that are involved uh, before and after the game. And obviously, coming back to the loss, huge defeat against South Africa, it will come back to the conditioning side of things. That will include the diet, you know, fitness programs. And even, it will also come down to money. You also need a huge pocket to make sure that you have a, a proper rugby team. So rugby is not that cheap to play. Yes, anyone can play that sport, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's not something that is cheap. But what it will do, obviously, uh, talking, to, talking about the Sables, our men's side, you know, remember, we've beaten now Namibia at under 20. Now our ladies have also set the precedence. Now it's now left to the gentlemen. I'm sure looking at these results, they will, they will actually inspire them, maybe encourage them to get past Namibia. Yeah, draw a lot of confidence, but they have to get past Cote d'Ivoire first. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's, so let's quickly break it down. Against South Africa, uh, we lost 108 to nil. Mm. And one of the major things uh, that Sydney pointed out was an issue around fitness. Our ladies were just not at that fitness level that uh, these South African women were at. So you might be asking the question, why were they not at the same level? All right, let's put things in, in perspective. 2020, we went into a global shutdown, right? Everybody yeah. got shut down. Okay, all cool. But South Africa came out of the shutdown much faster than we did. Yes. And when they did that, these ladies went into camp. Mm -hmm. So for approximately one and a half years, these ladies were in camp because they had already qualified for the Women's World Cup mm -hmm. for one and a half years. Our women's disables only went into camp three to four weeks ago yeah. in order to condition for this, uh, you know, Rugby Africa Women's Cup. Mm -hmm. And so already in terms of fitness levels, we were just not there. Number two, our, the women from South Africa actually play professional rugby. Yes. They eat, sleep, drink rugby. Mm -hmm. in their bus. They get paid for doing this. And some of them are playing their club rugby in England. And we all know how strong England is in women's, women's rugby. rugby. Yes. They are actually getting, uh, their salaries are almost at par with the men's rugby team. Wow. So that means they are living very comfortably from the sport. The level of commitment will definitely be on a higher level. So these are some of the reasons why we lost. And then you would wonder, against Namibia, why did we win so comfortably? One of the things that I will point out yes. first, uh, first, positively, mm. before I, I look at some of the other negatives, even in this victory. Mm. Uh, number one, we clearly had a game plan. We knew our structure. We knew what we wanted to do to run the ball down the line, stretch the Namibian defense, punch holes through the gaps, and get our runners on the ball. And we were doing that quite successfully. Mm. When it came to the scrums, we were dominating them quite significantly mm -hmm. against Namibia. Namibia had a number of scrums in our own 22, but they were not able uh, to actually push or force a result uh, against us. Now, let's run away from all of that. Let's now come back to some of the negative things that I still see that have to be fixed. Yeah. Number one, we won that match because Namibia's defense was not rushing like the South African defense. Mm -hmm. Now, when we have got a rushing defense... Sorry, I, I need to cut you off there. Yeah. We, we won because we exploited their weaknesses, period. Uh, whatever. They, they had their own defense systems that we managed to penetrate. They, they That's not our not, problem. They were not running or because the result, were, once it got away from them, at round about 28 bar or so, <laughs> then they just thought, look, you know what, what is the point? 
and then they just allowed us to keep on coming. Then number two, the number of handling errors was also quite appalling from a team that we were not getting pressure from. We had 15 handling errors, 15. All of them okay. which could have resulted in a try and could have given us a 100 plus score against Namibia. The 100 was there for the taking against Namibia. Okay. Because we were more powerful than them, we were uh, doing the, 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 the business. So, in my view, we also now need to look at our mature players and say, you no longer have the pace. All respect to Ruimbom Sere, all respect to Precious okay. Marani. Okay. Look, I'm mentioning our them own, because uh, I love them very much. Yeah. They are good rugby players yes. and they've served the nation well. But from a tactical point of view, because we have to be realistic, mm. from a tactical point of view, they don't have the level of pace that they used to have back then. Okay. Putting them in the back line will be dangerous against stronger teams. Munoropa. And that's but, exactly but what we, we need to look, also look at this, uh, Chaureka. Mm. Those guys have managed to secure the jersey in the team. Mm. But looking at the youngsters, can they play at the same level? Because remember, mm. we are not just talking about pace. We also talk about uh, things like tackling, mm. things like, you know, uh, knowing how to penetrate a defense, things on how, how to stop a player. You know, the basic, basic rugby. Do we have youngsters to fill in those positions? Because what they are doing 100%. also... 100%. Okay, can you, can you name a few players who will be able to they were fill actually, those positions? They were actually playing there yesterday, right? Mm. Number one, we saw how uh, a delight, for example, uh, Chuoniso Mabika as an mm. outside center. Their center pairing was absolutely perfect. And then when we look at, um, uh, it was uh, Chirinda, it might, might be Pr Priscilla Chirinda. Uh, she had a very decent game as she was coming through from the fullback position. She controlled things much better, was able to kick uh, for territory when uh, she saw that pressure was mounting. We saw Taryn. Taryn had a much better game uh, this time round um, as or in the flyer position. I'm sure we saw a little bit of a clip of it. Uh, where she was able to play a looping run, then she was able to give an inside pop pass, and so on and so forth. Look, but she plays great remember, when she wait. She plays awesome when she's not under pressure. So these are some of the things which will come with time. The more test matches that our women play, mm -hmm. the better they will become. I know Lisi was looking at some of these things, and I'm sure she also tore some of her hair out, saying, "Why are you allowing these things to happen?" Why are we having too many handling errors and so on and so forth? I know you can play better. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but then, look, we are coming from a heavy defeat. What mm -hmm. you, you would want as a coach is to get your best soldiers out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand that. Yes, youngsters, at some point, we have to introduce them. But that process has to be slow. Right. Because we can't Sydney. throw them at the deep Sydney. end, hoping that they will perform. We didn't know what to expect against Namibia. We, no, we, we knew certainly... what to expect. Everybody knew that it was going to be a victory. The question was how much. Yes, but what I'm saying is, yeah. it's our, remember this, like what you've mentioned before, before is these ladies haven't played uh, international competitive rugby mm -hmm. for two years. Mm -hmm. Played their first game against South Africa that was adequately, that adequately prepared for the tournament. Mm -hmm. Lost heavily. We didn't know what was happening in Namibia, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were preparing, I don't know, mm -hmm. but what you want is to get your best soldiers on the day. Right. Now, here's the misconception. I did not say that Precious Marange and Rubo <laughs> Musere must go out of the team. What I am but saying... But you're suggesting that no, it's time, yeah, no, no, they are old. So I what are you saying, Kovic? Uh, uh, so yes. I said, we now need to change their positions. For example, we've seen uh, Precious Marange play in a forward position in seven. Have we not? But we've seen, this is wait, a different wait, game. Wait, wait. We've yeah. seen Ruben Bomsere also play within a forward position in the seventh. Now, here would be my tactics if I was the coach. Now, Lissy, you know but what you're it not. is. You can contact you're me. Not. I can let you. <laughs> but here's what we're saying. Here's what I would say. I would take uh, uh, Ruimbo hmm. and I would uh, take Precious Marange and I'll put them in, in a loose trio position. Loose trio, why? Based uh, on what? Right. Number one, her defense is much better. That is Ruimbo said. In terms of attack, she was struggling for pace. Whenever she was given the ball open wide, one of the tries, she actually fluffed them because, yeah, she then fell over and so on. Now, in terms of her build, she's good. 
if you are now to tell her as a number seven, you are now taking her to what is this? Uh, to to now attack the flyer, particularly in the South African game. If the flyer had been attacked, which was where the full crumb of all the attack was coming from, then you would have seen maybe a different result. But in any case, let's settle the matter. Well done, you ladies. let us know. <laughs> look, ladies, well done. But look, you can let us know. Like, comment, share, subscribe. What are your thoughts in terms of the whole deal with the women's sables? Do you think that other tactics can be used? Do you think that other players can be brought in? If so, please do write in the comment section. We take a quick break, but when we come back, we are going to be discussing more issues. Well, welcome back uh, to this next segment after that heated discussion. <laughs> But in any case, uh, welcome back. I do have Sydney Samanu, our resident analyst here. And we're now looking forward to some international rugby. And we're going to look at it very quickly. Two finals that came through. Mm -hmm. um, both of them were absolutely amazing. And starting yeah. off in the morning, I mean, what a way to start off your Saturday morning. Crusaders versus Auckland Blues. Crusaders picking up their 11. Wow. 11. Wow. Super rugby trophy. As long as it's called a super rugby competition, mm. <laughs> they, they won their 11th title in 14 finals wow. that they've gone into. Wow. So Scott Robertson doing a fantastic job. And hey, his job was made easier by the class of Richie. Richie and uh, that tall gentleman, the lock. Oh, yes, yeah, Sam White Lock. Oh. The veteran. Aye, <laughs> aye. They were just running rampant on that game. Richie was controlling the pace of the game. Um, his kicking game was on point and you know you know what Richie does you know attacking you know look Richie you can't give him two centimeters and he's one person that can actually tell that his opposite number is standing flat-footed and all of a sudden the goosey he runs into space bring other players into play and he's just an, an amazing uh, he's, no, he's no longer a number 10 he's no longer a fly up but he's a, now a playmaker that's what we would call him but also coming back to closer to home, South Africa, uh, two South African teams in the inaugural United Rugby Championship, Blue Bulls taking on Stormers. Who would have thought that uh, two South African teams would meet in a final where there were other teams from other part of parts of the world playing in, showing that the South Africa, you know, sealing their dominance in the rugby space, uh, obviously. Unfortunately, for one of my favorite coaches, uh, Jake White, just coming short there, losing by 18 points to the 13. Uh, congratulations to the Stormers. They, they were showing the, the intention. Their build-up was perfect, introducing players. I remember the player that I like uh, from uh, Stormers, uh, their open side flanker, uh, his name is Damian. Mm -hmm. I hope, I, oh, wow, yes, Damian. he's yeah, an exceptional player. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the spring coaches were tracking him. And sooner or later, he's going to make uh, his first international appearance for the Springboks. All right, and uh, maybe finally on that one, what kind of an announcement does it sound out, particularly to all of the, you know, Northern Hemisphere wow. rugby playing nations, that look, you had an all New Zealand final, fine, it was a super rugby yeah. Pacific one, but that was an all New Zealand yes, final. Yes. And then you come to a United Rugby Championship, so, uh, uh, United Rugby Championship, mm -hmm. which is more inclusive, and again, you've now got Southern Hemisphere teams so it's like new zealand and south africa mm. have literally just asserted the fact that this is what it's about yes yes um look it's going to be i know that uh, right now we are in the rugby world cup mode already we have got uh, just a little uh, just oh, over about two months or so also. to get into the yeah yeah yeah. Come, yeah so trust me uh, these two teams are just exceptional teams south africa and new zealand uh, look there's no substitute I thought that South African teams, you know, pulling out of the Super Rugby, going into a, um, another competition that has got, you know, how Northern Rugby is when it comes to the conditions, that could affect your game plan. You know, it's always windy, it's always, it's always cold and stuff like that. But South African teams, I remember at some point, all four teams won their games. In the knockoff stages, Lions, mm -hmm. uh, Western Province, uh, Sharks. Sharks, as well as uh, the, the, the Blue Bulls. The Blue Bulls. It just show you that uh, the level of rugby that is being played in Southern Hemisphere is is actually it's, it's actually they are setting the, their standards 
up there and everyone has to now play catch up. I hopefully that will actually dovetail into our lovely country of Zimbabwe and yeah. Well, they are making use of some of our players, but in any case, <laughs> anyway, we, we move on from, from the rugby and we go into Formula One action. Well, the Canadian Grand Prix was there over the weekend and to help us look at that is also another resident analyst with Sports Extra, that is Rukudzo Vengesa. So the Canadian Grand Prix of 2022 went as expected with the defending champion Max Verstappen extending his driver's championship lead to a massive 46 points ahead of teammate Sergio Perez in the other Red Bull. Verstappen managed to hold off a very brave attempt by Carlos Sainz in the second Ferrari uh, to put pressure on him in the final 15 laps of the race after a late full safety car uh, caused by Yuki Tsunoda's uh, crash coming out of the pit lane. Uh, Verstappen had older tyres but he still managed to hold off signs with relative ease. Uh, the young Ferrari driver not really taking it to the defending champion and therefore allowing Verstappen to take a firm grip on the driver's title race. As I said, 46 points ahead of Perez who was very unfortunate yesterday. Engine problems caused him to retire from the race in just the ninth lap and also uh, Verstappen now takes a 49 point lead ahead of, uh, Fer of Ferrari's Charles Leclerc. Leclerc managed to come back from the very back of the grid after taking too many engine components that left him with two 10 place grid penalties. He managed to drive his way all the way up to fifth. A brilliant drive there uh, by the Ferrari driver but uh, some people are saying strategy mistakes by Ferrari. Uh, led to him finishing fifth he could have actually even finished on the podium he had much better pace than the two mercedes that finished ahead of him uh, that being of course lewis hamilton and george russell uh, speaking of mercedes they had a much better weekend of it uh, no problems uh, so much with the porpoising that has been causing uh, their season to be quite dramatically bad if you ask me uh, lewis hamilton finishing on the podium for just the second time this season george russell uh, just behind him so i think total wolf can be pretty satisfied with this weekend's uh, performance. Now Alpine driver and two-time former world champion Fernando Alonso started the race in second on the front row alongside Verstappen but he ended up in ninth after a series of uh, well, basically a comedy of errors, some bad strategy by his team, some engine problems for himself as well as the fact that he was caught weaving down the straight that got him uh, shall we say two, uh, two place grid penalty and led to him finishing in ninth behind the two Alfa Romeos so not a good weekend as well uh, for Fernando Alonso who had talked quite a big game ahead of the race thinking that he could challenge Verstappen. All in all it's pretty much as you were in the title race as I said Verstappen looks like he's going to run away with the title after last season's exciting uh, battle between himself and Hamilton it looks like we're going to have pretty much a procession unless things start going dramatically wrong for Red Bull and Ferrari can get their shall we say season back on track yesterday they managed to get both drivers to finish can they do the same in two weeks time at the British Grand Prix well, you heard it right uh, from Rukudzo. Uh, yeah, it looks like just the amount of intensity mm -hmm. at the top of the drivers' championship standings continues to go on and on. But guess who's not in that conversation? <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> God, goodness me. Um, Lewis, I, I, I think that move where he came from uh, he came from what, what which which company no, he had come from williams came to mercedes yeah. won seven titles but now yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's not the center is not holding for lewis but look he's a great driver we hope to see him in the future maybe he's going to come bounce back you never know yeah you never know he just needs a much much better car <laughs> well <laughs> so in any case look Today was a very, very, very short episode uh, because, you know, uh, those behind the scenes they said, look, we can't be shooting for five hours because that's what we do as sports guys. We talk for ever. Ever, yeah. But in any case, make sure that you like, you share, you comment, you subscribe. Uh, let us know if you're enjoying our content. And of course, 
uh, make sure you go through to our Facebook and Instagram uh, platforms. That is at Sports Extra Zim. You will find most of the content that we'll be reporting on and talking about and some of the features we'll be discussing as well. And go on our YouTube channel, which is Sports Extra ZW, and you won't miss a heartbeat of action well next week we'll be coming back with schoolboy rugby it will be back we'll be talking about local football we'll be talking about local rugby and so much more on sports extra your premium online sports show i'm your host rumba chakrega and a great big thank you to our resident analyst sydney salanu and of course for now we say cheerio <laughs>